Shalom and God blessings, people of God. I greet you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share with us um, a very important message to help increase our faith. You know, to make to help us to understand because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You know, so that our faith shall be rooted. This is the word of God. This is the will of God. The word of God said that a just shall live by faith. So our faith has to be anchored on something solid, something substantial. Because I have seen that, you know, um, the word of God, God has an order. An order on how he set out that we worship him. There are many things that many believers in the body of Christ don't know about, but let me not talk too much. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you, O oh God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we sanctify, O oh God, King of glory, your word, uh, sanctify our lives through your word. As Father Lord, I share this message with your people that, O oh God, you will use it to, you use it to, sanctify because the Lord Jesus prayed that that we be sanctified by the word by the truth the word is truth let the truth that shall go forth this hour sanctify your people and cleanse your people oh God from every doubt and every double mindedness and cause our faith to be anchored strongly in the Lord in Jesus name amen Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want us to look into the issue of the Kingsman Redeemer. And, you know, when we understand the issue of the Kingsman Redeemer and what Jesus Christ accomplished for us, I see Revelation chapter 5 as the the center of our redemption is it's our redemption story revelation chapter 5 is so important that if that chapter is removed from the bible we don't have hope it is called uh, the book and uh, it is about the scroll written inside and outside That is the core of what the Lord Jesus did for us. He talks, it is about redemption. Before we um, understand, if you know, for us to understand this, Revelation chapter 5, I think we should read it first. Let's read it, please. I want you to be patient with me. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong, a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, what, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look up thereon. And one of the elders said to me, Weep not! Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood the lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harp and golden vials full of order, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us. Hallelujah to God. 
by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth and I behold and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all of them that are in them had I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that seated upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever and the four beasts and the four beasts said amen and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever so the word said here that every creature in heaven on the earth under the earth and that's such as in the sea and all that that they are in they worship the Lord. They worship the Lord and they said, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that seated upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Now, I want us quickly to look at uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Okay, it says, from, let me read from 17. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we reign with, we glorified, we may be also glorified. For I reckon that the sufferings, okay, let me read from 19. For the annex expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity and not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected him in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. For we know that the whole creation groaned and travelled in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which are the first fruit of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of our body. The redemption of our body. So we are now talking about redemption, the subject of redemption. Man, man lost the heritage that God gave him. That is the point here. Man lost the heritage that God gave him. God is just and righteous and holy. When he put man, he created man, he gave him an inheritance, the garden. We know about the beauty of the garden. And he put man there. And... Um, through sin and he asked man to multiply and have dominion and exercise the right of ownership of the earth man was the owner of the earth because the bible said that the earth that god has given to the sons of men so man was the owner so god asked man to exercise the right of the ownership of the earth which god gave him if we read um psalm chapter 8 we see where it says what is man that thou visitest him you know what is man you have given him dominion let me just let me just you know quickly look at it and we just want you to be patient with me as we look through the scriptures when i consider the heavens that is a uh, psalm chapter 8 what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast made him put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, all the beasts, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. God gave man dominion over all his creation on earth so man inherited the earth from god and god said to man be fruitful multiply have dominion you know 
and then he said till and keep keep the garden that is keep and till the garden so there was perfect peace because man and god became one god walked the garden during the evening times and morning times and man fellowship with god man was not eating anymore there was no trouble between man and animal everything was subjected to man but man lost that to satan when man lost that the inheritance returned to the owner god into his hand so satan began to devastate the earth man has lost the ownership of the earth so the inheritance returned to god and satan began to devastate the earth now i want us to understand the what is redemption i just let us pause from that you know what the devil did to the earth let us now understand what jesus mean to us as our redeemer the king's man redeemer in the hebrew bible uh, in the hebrew uh, word for um, redeemer the redeemer um it's called gao that is the hebrew pronunciation of the redeemer to redeem that is to redeem gao that is to redeem to buy back to purchase to ransom so god gave laws in israel concerning redemption concerning redemption first one of the laws that god gave concerning redemption is the law for the land the land god said the land shall not be sold forever for the land is mine for you are strangers and sojourners with me so the land belongs to god we we all bear witness that people just live and go and the land is here the land belongs to god and god said that no land shall be sold forever so and in all the land of your possessions you shall grant a redemption for the land if your brother works his poor and had sold away some of his possessions and if any of his king come to redeem it then shall he redeem that which his brother sold and if the man have no one to redeem it and himself is able to redeem it then let him count the years and restore the overplus unto the man whom he sold it that he may return his to his possession but if he be not able to restore it then that which is so shall remain in the land of him until the year of jubilee that is the point here so god is saying that if somebody is poor and i know back home many people sell their land you know to put their children to school many people sell their land to at times not just selling at times it is renting out the land you know renting out the land or at times it is sold to somebody who want to build a house but that's against the law of god god said that the land shall not be sold forever if you sell your land because of poverty or you need money somebody a kinsman that is a kinsman must be somebody a man a man that is near to you should buy back that land on your behalf or if you get money if you get money eventually then you count the overplus of how long the person has used the land how much did he buy and you get money you count now i don't know how you calculate how they calculate that you pay back the man how much whatever whatever the value of the land anyway just the value of the land it's like the value of a house you pay and get your land back but if you don't have money to get your land back during 50 years of the year of jubilee that land everybody will return to his property every land will be set free and everybody return to his land because the land shall not be sold forever so a king's man will buy back what somebody has sold off another law for the king's man redeemer is 
the first one I read is uh, was Leviticus chapter twenty five verse twenty three. Now twenty five forty seven to fifty five he says, and if a sojourner or a stranger works rich, maybe somebody, let me say a Chinese man came to America or came to Nigeria, and he's very very rich. He's a billionaire or something like that. And somebody, you have the person, you know, very poor and decided, say, and if a sojourner or a stranger was wax rich by thee and your brother dwelt by him is poor and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee or uh, to the stock of the stranger's family and that he, that he sold him, that he sold may be redeemed again. One of his brother may redeem him. Either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or any that is nigh of kin unto him for the family may redeem him, or if he able, he may redeem himself. So, somebody sells yourself to the stranger, and you know, because of lack of money, you know, begin to work for the stranger as a servant. God said that a king's man has to redeem that person. A king's man has to redeem that person. Or if the person gets money, it's like slavery, you know. And as I, you know, and there was a proclamation when they said during the proclamation or something like that. That somebody that was able, is it online or queer or one or something, or loud that or what, he bought himself out of slavery. So if you have money to buy yourself out of that slavery, then the person can do it. Now, there is another part of um, the Kingsman Redeemer. There's another law. The law of widowhood. The law of widowhood. God gave a law that if a relative, let me look for it in the Bible, that is if. Um, Okay, Deuteronomy 25, 5 to 10, saying when brothers live together and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the deceased shall not be married outside the family to a stranger, a strange man. Her husband's brother shall go in to her and take her to himself as wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother. It shall be that the firstborn whom she bear shall assume the name of his dead brother, so that his name will not be blotted out from Israel. But if the man does not desire to take his brother's wife, then his brother's wife shall go up to the gates to the elders and say, My husband's brother refused to establish a name for his brother in Israel. He is not willing to perform the duty of a husband's brother to me. Then the elders of this city shall summon him and speak to him. And if he persists and says, I do not desire to take her, then his brother's wife shall come to him in the sight of the elders and pull his sandal off his foot and spit in his face. And she shall declare, Thus it is done to the man who does not build up his brother's house. In Israel his name shall be called the house of him whose sandal is removed. The man will be walking with one sandal. He will be walking with one sandal. Because he refused to redeem his brother. So we see that Judah, Judah's son, Judah's first son died. And um, Judah asked, because his, that first son did not have, he was wicked before God, and God killed him. And because that first son did not have a son, Judah sent his brother Onan to go and sleep with his brother's wife so that his brother could have a offspring but she spilled but during the time he was sleeping with his brother's wife he spilled the sea the semen on the floor and god was angry and god killed him god killed him because he refused to raise a house for his brother so we see that this law of the um buying back your brother's wife that is raising family we see that root we see that boaz was able to buy root, that is, buy back root or raise 
the name of the dead. Raise the name of the dead on behalf of um, Nomi's dead relative, Nomi's dead husband and children. Nomi had a husband and two sons, and they all died, and they left her with no seed. So when he, Nomi brought Ruth, Boaz, Boaz, you know, eventually, I'm not going to go to that story, Boaz eventually married Ruth to raise a son for the dead. There was a near kinsman redeemer that should have purchased Ruth, but or that is that should have married Ruth, but that near kinsman did not marry Ruth. So he removed the sandal and gave it to Boaz, and Boaz married the Ruth in order to raise name for the family of Ahimelech, Elimelech, that is Nomi's husband, to raise a name for that generation. So that is another law for the kinsman redeemer. So another law for the kinsman redeemer is avenger of blood. If somebody kills, if somebody kills, if somebody kills a relative, uh, somebody, then a man, a male relative, should avenge for the blood of the dead relative. It's called avenger of blood. That is another law for the kinsman redeemer to revenge for his dead relative so those are the laws for the of the kinsman redeemer um jesus god himself declared that he is the redeemer of israel and then in in jeremiah chapter 50 verse 34 we hear where jeremiah said their redeemer is strong the lord of hosts is his name he shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and despite the inhabitants of babylon and then we see that in exodus 6 says where god pledged to israel i am the lord and i will bring you out of from under the bodies of Egypt and I will read you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with outstretched arm and with a great judgment. Uh, Proverbs 23, 11 says, For their Redeemer is mighty, he shall plead their cause. Now, I, there are many scriptures about this Redeemer. So God is our, uh, our the Redeemer of his people. Now, let's return to our story. So man sold his inheritance, just as we just read now. Man sold his inheritance, the inheritance that God gave him to Satan through disobedience. So when an inheritance is sold or disponed, there was two books. There were two books. I think we we can understand this thing um, when Jeremiah. Let's um, read let's read Jeremiah where how a transaction for the land that will help us to understand the book written inside and outside. Because it's a pattern of law in Israel that we are shown. And Jeremiah said, that is uh, Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 6 to 12. And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hanamel, the son of Shalom, thy uncle shall come unto thee, saying, Buy thee my field that is in Anathoth. For the right of redemption is thine to buy it. So Hamil, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said unto me, By my field, I pray thee that this in Anathoth, which is in the country, Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is thine, and the redemption is thine. Buy it for thyself. Then I knew that this was from the Lord. So I bought the field, okay, the neighbor said, and I subscribe the evidence. 
that is the sealed and sealed it and took witnesses and went him the money in the balances so i took the evidence of the purchase both that which was sealed according to the law and custom and that which was open that is that is a seal and i gave the evidence of the purchase unto baruch the son of nareh the son of and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the jews so there are witnesses when this happens so when an inheritance this is a commentary i want to read now when an inheritance was thus disposed away by his rightful possessor just as uh, Je jeremiah's um um nephew did he was he, he was giving he was selling away his inheritance there are two books or instruments of writing made of the transaction the one open and the other sealed specifying price and particulars these books and mortgage deeds went into the hands of the one to whom the property was thus made over is a mortgage deed a sealed book becomes a standing sign of an alienated here so because the this inheritance has been alienated the book is sealed i have given it away the book is sealed and be so held as to be liable to be recovered on the terms of specified so that book that is sealed up that book that is sealed we may remain sealed until a person that will fulfill the condition to open that book will come to open it and when anyone legally representing the original proprietor was found competent to lift and destroy that sealed instrument and thus to buy back what had been disposed away he was called the girl girl that is the redeemer and the inheritance was considered redeemed so far that he now had full right to dispose of it whoever might be found on it and to enter into it. okay i want to stop here as a part one so that i can continue the part two